After I last did the unboxing video for the IKEA Symphonics bookshelf speakers, a lot of you guys were asking me to compare with the Play Ones or the Sonos Ones. Now today's video, we are just going to dive exactly into that and let's find out which is a better speaker. Like I usually do, I'll give my answer right up front. Sonic performance wise, the Sonos Play One is without a question the better speaker. Now, the answer is not always that straightforward, so if you have time to stay around and stick around for the rest of the video, let's discuss this in more detail. And if you're going to be using these speakers for music for any amount of time, I would strongly suggest that you get them in a stereo pair. Today, we are looking at these on its own individual speaker performance. For music performance, it is quite clear that the Sonos Play One is going to sound a lot better. For surround sound duty in a surround sound setup when you're going to deploy these as the rear speakers as I suspect what a lot of you guys might be doing, it is actually harder to tell the difference. Let me go into more details. So let's talk about the differences that makes up this video today. Now between the Sonos Play 1 and the bookshelf here from IKEA, you're going to see that the grill can be removed for the Symphonics bookshelf speaker. After you remove the cover, you will see everything that makes up this speaker. Now it's quite a bit taller than the Play One's or the Sonos One. And if you look here, there's a port. This speaker, the Symphonics bookshelf speaker, is actually a ported design. Now the Play One's and the One's, they are not ported because they are sealed architecture for more moisture resistance and you can deploy them in a slightly wetter places. When there's a port, the moisture can get in to the speaker and that will mess around with the electronics inside and that's not what you want to happen. Now this Sonos Play One is a 7 year old design. It was launched in the year 2013 in right about October, so well, almost 7 years old. This is a relatively new, it was launched within the last year. And if you compare the driver size, I did a bit of googling and research, the tweeter on this Symphonix bookshelf is one and a quarter inch as opposed to the tweeter on the Play Ones or the Sonos One, which are one inch silk dome speaker tweeters. And the woofer here, it is decidedly small. I looked at it, I thought it was about three inch, but I did a bit of research and I found that it's two and three quarter inches. This is as opposed to the three and a half inch on the Sonos Play One. Now, you might wonder, two and three quarter inch might be a little bit hard to put out any form of uh, reasonable base. And I suspect that is what this port is for. So with the port, you will be able to augment the bass better. But a lot of you might already know that ported design speakers versus sealed design speakers. Sealed design, they are more subtle, the bass is more even. Ported design, the bass tends to get more in your face and there's a mid-bass bump. Both of these speakers, they have no mics, so you're not going to get your uh, hey, <laughs> yeah, that word. You're not going to get the assistance on these speakers. Now, of course, you can buy the Sonos One, not the One SL. One SL has no mic. The Sonos One will be able to take your verbal commands. Now, the thing about this is that it actually doubles up as a bookshelf. So if you buy the IKEA mounting kit, you can actually wall mount this. And the surface area here is actually quite reasonable. You can use this to stack things on the top of this bookshelf speaker. So versatile, yes, this is probably a lot more versatile than Sonos Play One or the Sonos One is going to be purpose built for the purpose of music sound. I'm going to put this back. So next, I did some frequency sweeps and I measured the frequency response of both the speakers here. I'm just going to flash up the frequency response curves here. It's uh, not difficult to read the frequency response curves. First, I'll show you the IKEA Symphonix bookshelf frequency response curve, which is the one in green here. Now, if you look at the green response curve, it looks like there is a peak at the about 90, 90 plus hertz. Now, the fall off of the bass below 90 hertz is actually pretty quick and you see a pretty steep slope following that. The 2.75 inch speaker cones is not going to be putting out that much bass. So the peak at 90 hertz, 95 hertz or so is probably being augmented by the fact that there is a port to help with the bass response. Now when there is a peak like that in the 90 hertz range with the bass 
falling off quite quickly after that. You're going to find that this speaker is, when it plays sound, it's going to bring a lot of attention to itself. You can kind of hear where the sound is coming from and you will look at the speaker and the speaker, the sound is going to be confined to the speakers. And that is how it feels when I listen to the Symphonist bookshelf speakers. Now, without comparing to the Sonos Play ones, you're not going to be finding much meaning in this green curve on its own. So let me bring up the red curve. Now, the red curve is the frequency response curve for the Sonos Play 1 speaker. Straight away, you can tell the bass extension is much deeper there. It goes down all the way to even 40, 50 hertz and it's still making itself pretty much heard. Now, the bass peak at 90, 95 hertz is not going to be as strong as coming from the Symphonix bookshelf speakers. That is because it is a sealed design. I'm not going to attribute the whole sound profile to whether the difference of it being sealed or ported, but it does make a difference. When you listen to a ported design, basically what happens is that you can feel that the mid bass is stronger and it hits you more in the face. A sealed architecture for a speaker is going to appear like the sound is slightly more even. Now when you listen to the sounds coming from the Sonos Play ones or the Sonos One for the matter, it's going to sound a little bit more even. It's going to sound a little bit more spread out. It doesn't look like all the sound is, it doesn't sound like all the sound is coming up within the speaker cabinet. When you listen to the bass coming out from these speakers, you will find that the bass drops on the Play Ones or the Sonos Ones are going to be a lot deeper and more evenly spread out. Anything between 80 Hz to 150 Hz, the bass output from the IKEA Symphony speaker is going to be a lot higher. You will feel that that frequency range, which is what I term as the mid bass, is going to hit you in the face. And you can feel that mid bass response much louder from this speaker itself. Now, the speaker cabinet, the volume itself is overall a lot louder, a lot bigger than the Sonos Play one. And that could contribute as well. It's also a little bit boxier. I think there's more room inside. You need the room for the port. Now, the good thing is, now I have to remove this again. The good thing is that the port is right in front. It is not at the back. So even when you wall mount it to the wall or you push it to the back of the wall or mount it on the bookshelf itself amongst all your books, bookshelf speaker, the bass response is still going to be unchanged as long as you don't block this port here. Now, if this port were to be rear mounted port, then of course it's going to block the airflow and the sound signature will change significantly. So good design, the port is right in front of the speaker. For the higher frequency range, you will see that the Play Ones are actually still doing better, despite the fact that it's only having a three and a quarter inch tweeter. The tweeter on this guy is 1.25 inch, one and a quarter inch. So technically it's supposed to go louder, but if you look at the chart, the red curve for the Sonos Play One, you can see that the higher frequency response is still gonna be higher on the Play Ones. Now, throughout the entire frequency range, save for 80 to 150 Hertz, this guy is still going to be giving out more sound, more output. Now, I've done all my tests and all the measurements without TruePlay. I've heard that TruePlay actually does quite a bit for the IKEA Symphonix range of speakers. I'll reserve that for another video. If you would like to be kept notified, please ensure that you subscribe to my channel and ring that notification bell so that when my video drops, you will be notified and you can view it first. So let's get to the use cases of this. When do you deploy one or the other? Now, the Sonos Play 1 from its inception seven years ago, even right up to the current Sonos 1 and the Sonos 1 SL, be it Gen 1 or Gen 2, they are moisture resistant. So you can deploy them in the wetter and damper parts of your house, like the bathroom. And it will still work fine. It is a sealed architecture, no way for the water and the moisture to get into the speaker. Now, it is not waterproof, so don't put it where the rain will get to it or where the water will likely splash on this guy. It is not waterproof. Moisture resistance, yes. Now, this guy is not moisture resistance, so you cannot put it in a bathroom. They call it the bookshelf speaker, so put it on a bookshelf. It is where it belongs. And if you wanted to warm mount the Play Ones or the Sonos One, they do sell warm mounts, uh, warm mount kits for this guy. It sticks out quite a bit and after you warm out a Sonos Play 1 or a Sonos 1, you're not going to be doing much with it. You're not going to be placing things on top. There are controls on top of this and the area isn't very big. For the Sonos 1 and the Sonos 1 SL, they have capacitive touch buttons at the top. So placing anything will invalidate the touch controls. But on the other hand, you can warm out this guy vertically 
or horizontally, vertically it saves some space, or you can mount it horizontally. And the wall mount kit from IKEA actually provides a silicone pad which you can place on top of these speakers and you can place your stuff on top and it doesn't run off and fall off the speaker. So pretty useful, pretty versatile piece of Sonos kit here. If you are going to be using these speakers as standalone, either once or in a stereo pair for music, my recommendation is go with the Sonos One or the Sonos Play ones. They do sound better, the bass is richer, it is more even, and the sound, it simply sounds better. The bass is not that in your face, so it's not that distracting. For music purposes, this guy, now, again, I'm going to qualify, right? You're not going to be disappointed. It will still sound good, it still sounds rich, but today is a comparison video. I'm trying to compare these two guys. The bass output for this guy, the focus is more on the mid bass portion. So the mid bass actually comes to you more readily. Voices, especially male voices, will actually sound a little bit more forward. Overall, in terms of sound dispersion, the Sonos Play 1 or the Sonos 1 will sound a little bit wider. The sound seems to come from beyond the cabinet itself. Whereas this guy, you will know for very, very sure that the sound is coming from this particular point. It's got to do with the smaller woofers, I'm quite sure of that, and the fact that it's a ported design and the mid bass is blown and emphasized. Now, the use case that will work for the Symphonix bookshelf speaker, it is definitely for surround duties. If you have an arc or a beam or any of the play bars or the play bass that Sonos makes and you're using it as a sound bar for your TV or for your movie watching, you want surround sound. Previously, you could get the Sonos Ones. I mean, that's what they're selling now. The Play Ones are harder to get. But now, they have a $99 alternative. You buy a pair of it, it's $198. It's still a dollar cheaper than a Sonos One that you can get. Granted, this one doesn't have voice control, but if you didn't want voice control for the Sonos One, you get the Sonos One SL, which works out $179. And with that, it is still going to be much more expensive if you buy a pair of them it's going to work out to almost $360 as opposed to $198 below $200 when you get a pair of the IKEA Symphonix bookshelf speakers this is by far the cheapest way you're going to get surround sound for your setup so if you don't already have surround sound for your setup go and get this I see no reason why you shouldn't be doing that it is less than $200 to increase the enjoyment from your setup multiple four. Now, this wasn't available in Singapore until last week. So for those of you who are living in Singapore and you're missing out on this piece of news, do know that IKEA Singapore is actually holding these speakers in stock. You can walk right in and you can buy them or you can get them delivered to you if you don't want to risk going to IKEA. They do have demos set up so you can go there and listen to how the bookshelf sounds or how the lamp sounds and you can compare for yourself. The lamp is decidedly more expensive. This one, best value for you right, right now. For those of you who have access to this speaker and have not set up your surround sound, go for this guy. So the reason why I think that there is a comparison to the Sonos Play ones instead of Sonos One is the fact that there are times when you can actually get the Sonos Play ones at 99 US dollars. Here, refurbished sets. Now they do last a pretty long time. So if you can get them at 99 dollars, it is probably worth a deal because it definitely sounds better. In a surround setup, maybe you can't really tell the difference because they are just playing surround duties, but in a music setup, this will definitely sound better, even though it's a seven-year-old piece of tech. Now, the refurbished sets are not always available, so if it pops up, you buy them and you buy them at $99. Same price as this Symphonix bookshelf speaker, but sounds better. You have to note though, the Sonos Play 1 has no airplay. No Airplay 1, no Airplay 2. So if you want that Airplay, this is the guy to get. Again, if you are deploying them in surround sound configuration, Airplay doesn't matter. You only need to Airplay to your main Sonos Arc or the Sonos Beam and it will work. So that is my summary. If you like how this looks, go for this guy. It does sound reasonably good. And the price, you can't fight the price. The best feature about this thing is the price, 99 US dollars. Cheapest way into the Sonos ecosystem by far. So what I have lined up next for you is that I did a recording 
of the sounds and you can hear for yourself is there are some bass drops inside there are some dramatic music inside some cinematic moves inside it is recorded using one speaker but what i wanted to bring across is the voice listen to the voicing and the bass quality differences between the two clips i will first play the ikea symphonics bookshelf speaker clip and then i will play the sonos play one clip here for yourself see how it feels find the differences now if my work has been useful to you do consider subscribing to my channel leave a like to this video so that more people can find my work easier if you are keen to contribute to my coffee fund if i have been of help of any amount to you do consider making a small contribution to my patreon account for my coffee fund i thank you and i will see you in my next video This is Dolby Atmos, the world's first object-based cinematic audio. With powerful moving audio that transcends from channels to moving around you with pinpoint accuracy. Whether the soundscape sets the mood of a scene. Come on, you guys, let's go. Or captures the full extent Do you want to know my secret? of nature's fury. This is Dolby Atmos, the world's first object-based cinematic audio. With powerful moving audio that transcends from channels to moving around you with pinpoint accuracy. Whether the soundscape sets the mood of a scene. Come on, you guys, let's go. Or captures the full extent of nature's fury.